Hey there, my vertex buffers. It's your index buffer here, Inferno Plus. Back with another list or something? Yeah, top 10 things that are not good and are also weapons, in order of the ones that are the baddest, notest, and the ones that are bad are the ones. Here we go. Number 10, the light crossbow from Demon's Souls. This thing is bad. And it's very obvious that it's bad since it cannot be upgraded and it has absolutely no scaling whatsoever. And, to make things worse, the light crossbow is almost immediately outclassed by the compound shortbow, which you can get right after beating the first boss. And to top all of that off, the description of the bolts is a lying piece of shit! I do not think that means what you think it means, Demon Souls. But in all fairness, it is a bit mean for me to pick on a weapon that can't be upgraded, and there actually are quite a few other trashy weapons that can't be upgraded scattered throughout this series, so I'm not going to include any more of them on this list, so they can consider themselves lucky. Number 9, the Handmaiden's Dagger from Dark Souls 3. This is a weapon that people requested I use a lot, and taking one look at it can tell you why. This weapon is a joke. Its AR and scaling are absolutely pathetic, and it cannot be infused or buffed. And instead of getting a decent weapon art like Quick Step or C Quick Step, it has Blind Spot. Cool, cool. So what else does this epitome of mediocrity have in store for us? Well, when you put it in your offhand, it gets a unique move set that is slower and worse than just using it normally. And as a coup de grace for this weapon, it has a passive effect where if you hit an enemy, you get back one whole fucking mana. Number eight, the soldering iron. So soldering. Soldering Iron from Dark Souls 3. This weapon is a liar. You say you block Estus recovery, but I see through your deceit. I did not learn from books. No, 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 no. I learned it all with my own mind. Number 7. The Hammer of Vamos from Dark Souls 1. This is the most vanilla bad weapon in the entire series, I believe. It's not really, like, offensively bad in any particular way, it's just very well rounded at being terrible. It has low AR, uh, terrible scaling, split damage, slow move set. it has a whiff punish, so great, awesome. And to even get the thing, you have to kill one of your blacksmiths. Awesome! But the worst part about it all is it tries to deceive you with its striking good looks and trick you into upgrading it before you realize that it's actually a trap. Number 6, The Storm Ruler from Dark Souls 3. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! Don't try it! Now, I could go on about how this weapon is the worst thing ever, all fucking day, but just to keep it short and simple, the version of the Storm Ruler in Demon Souls is incredible. It's fun, it's awesome, it's unique, it's great, awesome. The Dark Souls 3 version just ruins everything about it, and it's bad, and it's stupid, and it should go away, because I don't like it. And that's all. Number 5, The Needle of Eternal Agony from Demon Souls. And here we have yet another weapon that lies to you. This thing is just terrible all around, it has pathetic damage, annoying requirements, and making it is a pain in the ass due to Demon Souls' upgrade system, but the reason it's on this list is because it does not actually drain souls. The description says it drains souls, the wiki says it drains souls, I'm pretty sure the guide says it drains souls, but it does not do that, it just gives you souls. You just get them from nowhere, basically. Here is some footage of me testing this on someone in PvP, and nothing happens when you get hit by it. I don't lose souls, but the other player always gets souls when they hit them. So it is lying once again, and that's why it's a piece of crap, and someone should go edit the wikis, please. Number 4, The Dancer's Enchanted Swords from Dark Souls 3. Are you a fan of split damage? Do you like weapons that scale with four different stats? Well, these two swords are the perfect trash fire for you. I think most people are already aware of how bad this weapon is, as a lot of people have made it thinking it looked cool, and then realized it was absolutely unusable. And it's even been buffed a few times, but it's still terrible. The sad part is that it actually is really interesting. It's got a cool moveset, it looks nice, but unfortunately, even with 
30-30-40-40 in stats, it is still weaker than a raw falchion with a bundle on it. How? How did they mess this up so bad? Number 3, the Sorcerer's Twin Blade from Dark Souls 2. Oh boy, where do you even start with this trash magnet? As a catalyst, the Sorcerer's Twin Blade is pretty pathetic. It does about 30% less damage than the starting catalyst, and only gets marginally better when buffed with a resin or spell. It cannot cast hexes despite having dark damage on it, and to top it off, it has very demanding stats for some reason. Most sorcerers aren't going to invest much into strength or dexterity, so requiring large amounts of those is ridiculous. And, and what the fuck is that? Why does this have a faith requirement? It doesn't scale with faith at all! My only explanation for why this weapon is so god-awful is that maybe they originally intended it to cast two spells at once? A twin blade that twin casts spells? It would have actually been a really cool idea and made a really cool weapon, and it would have made sense why the weapon does so little damage because you get to cast two spells at once. But, I, I don't know, I guess we'll never know. Number 2. The Cleric's Candlestick from Dark Souls 3. I'm sure most of you knew this weapon was going to be on here somewhere. This beacon of disappointment shines bright in the darkness with its incredibly useful weapon art and expectation shattering AR, but where it really shines is in the magic department. Unlike the Sorcerer's Twin Blade, which can be buffed to improve its magic adjust and AR, this thing is unbuffable and uninfusable. Then, just as you think, well, maybe I can make a build around this. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's still a little bit usable. You remember what game this is? Dark Souls 3. Mages get out. Re now, before we reveal the number one trash bomb, let's give some honorable mentions to weapons that also deserve to be on this list, but didn't quite make the cut. The Pickaxe from Dark Souls 2. This weapon only avoids this list by having high AR and good scaling. Everything else about it is pretty terrible. It's also got good fashion though, so yeah. The Sage's Crystal Staff from Dark Souls 3. I was originally going to include this because on release this staff was just objectively worse than the Court Sorcerer's Staff, but now, at 60 intelligence, the Sage's Crystal Staff does 3% more damage than the Court Sorcerer's Staff while under the effects of the buff. So if you like paying a ton of mana for a short-lived buff that gives you a tiny bit more damage, this is the staff for you. The Whip from Dark Souls 1. This is a bad weapon that pretty much everyone knows about. Everyone's given it a shot at some point and tried to use it, but it's not fun. It's just, it's just not a fun weapon to use. And it only misses this list by having comparable AR to other weapons of the same type, such as a scimitar or... I, I actually only checked against a scimitar, but that's like good enough. Um, but yes, it is bad. It's just not bad enough to compare to some of this other trash I put on the list. The Great Machete from Dark Souls 3. Now this thing is actually not terrible, but it is uninspired and boring and stupid. Every fucking move it has is exactly the same. Everything is just an overhead smashy smash, Miyazaki smash attack. There, there's nothing interesting about it. There's nothing cool about it. It's fucking stupid. Fuck you. The Boom Hammer from Bloodborne. This one was actually brought up to my attention by someone on Twitter when I was asking about it. Uh, this thing is really disappointing. I actually remember being excited. I was like, it's a fucking rocket-powered sledgehammer. It's gonna be awesome. And I got it, and I upgraded it, and I was just like, this is not very cool, and I'm kind of sad I bothered with it. And that's the whole, that's my whole experience with the weapon. It's just, it's just kind of disappointing. And it's the only weapon from Bloodborne that even came close to being on this list because Bloodborne's weapons are all very good. So, just this one. And last, but not least, the Ghost Blade from Dark Souls 1. This thing is a trash fire, and it was going to be on the list until the last second when I noticed that it is actually the best option for a SL1 as a dagger. Now, SL1s can't use any daggers but this dagger, but this is... The one they can use, so it does have a use case. It, it's, it's not actually the worst thing ever, so go figure. It's still rare as hell, and you'll never find one, but technically it's okay in a very, very specific use case. So good luck, SL1, guys. And now, number one. The Spotted Whip from Dark Souls 3, because it made me lose on Solian. Number 1. 
the entirety of Dark Souls 3. Number 1. The Sniper Crossbow from Dark Souls 1. I like symmetry. We started with an abysmal crossbow, and we ended with an even more dreadful crossbow. I kind of get the feeling that Miyazaki hates crossbows, because the only game they were ever good in was Dark Souls 2. But we're getting off topic here. We have something awful to talk about. The sniper crossbow. Holy shit, this thing is bad. And I can't even really explain to you guys how truly atrocious it is. So, here's a demonstration. And there you have it, the top 10 worst weapons in Souls history. Feel free to keep the discussion going in the comments, it's always possible I made a mistake or I missed something, but I have done a lot of research and testing to make sure that this list is as accurate as I could possibly make it. And with that, thanks for watching, and have a great day.